So we start with the heat flow equation, which is Q by delta T is equal to conductivity times delta temperature by delta X. We are ignoring the area for a moment because we are going to assume that the area does not vary so that it can be incorporated into the conductivity itself. This is the heat flow equation. We also had another equation earlier that is the specific heat equation. Here we found that the heat input to a substance is directly proportional to its increase in temperature. This proportionality constant depends on the mass of the object and uh, uh, S here is called a specific heat. Now there are two Q's here, one and two. There are two delta T's. Here there is a delta X, here there is a delta T. So let us take a moment to look at these equations and to understand what these different delta T's and delta X's are. First of all, this K is called the thermal conductivity. We'll get that out of the way. Now, this Q here is the heat flow across an object. Across an object. But this Q is not the heat flow across an object. It is the heat flow into an object. They are primarily different because we say in this case that there is heat flowing across an object and we want to look at how that heat moves with temperature change. And here there is an object and there is heat flowing into it. And this heat causes a temperature increase for the whole object. So there is heat flow across an object, there is heat flow into an object. An important thing is the difference between the delta T here and the delta T here. Now this delta T here is the change in temperature or it's not even the change. There is no change here. There is no change. There is a difference instead. There is a difference in temperature. between two points, two points on the object, between two points on the object, separated by delta x distance. So there are two points separated by this much distance and the difference in temperature between two points on the same object, on the same object separated by that distance is delta t. But here delta T is the change. There is a change here. Delta T is the change in temperature of the whole object. This is the important difference. Here the whole object is at a single temperature. Here different points on the objects are at different temperatures. And delta T by delta X is the temperature difference between two points on the object separated by delta X. Here the whole object is at a single temperature and that temperature is changing as heat flows into the object. You can say that this is a change with position, which we call a gradient in physics. And this is a change with time, which we call a rate in physics. Right, so just like delta T by delta T is the rate, delta T by delta X is the gradient. Before we begin to combine these two equations, we will take a look at one more important difference between uh, these two equations. On the left side, you have Q by delta T is equal to K delta T by delta X. And on the right, you have Q is equal to MS delta T. What this equation says is that a delta T by delta X, the delta T by delta X, which we call the temperature gradient, 
anything the change in anything divided by position coordinate is called a gradient delta t by delta x is the temperature gradient a temperature gradient causes heat flow so it is the right side this temperature gradient which causes the left side which is the heat flow but in this equation heat flow is the agent heat flow causes a change in temperature this equation is in reverse this one causes this one a heat flowing into the body causes a change in temperature of the body this is another very important difference between these two equations and this leads us to the right method to combine the two equations you see this equation says that delta t causes a gradient basically delta t by delta x causes q and this equation says that q causes the delta t that means when there is a temperature gradient there will be heat flow from one part to another there will be heat flow from one part to another and that heat flow is going to cause a change in temperature of the different parts of the body if we treat the body as different made up of different parts if we treat the body as made up of different parts then this equation gives us the heat flowing between the parts going between parts and this equation gives us the increase in temperature as a result of this heat flow so you can see that there is a sort of loop situation forming here there is a temperature gradient there is a temperature gradient which causes a heat flow between parts of the body that heat flow affects the very temperature gradient which is causing it the heat flow affects the temperature gradient which is causing it based on the specific heats of the parts of the body this is our key to combining this equation and generating the heat flow equation so before we do that i will bring these two into the same footing here there is a rate of heat flow across a body which is equal to thermal conductivity times the temperature gradient across that body we will convert the second equation also into terms of heat flow rate you know that q is equal to mass times specific heat times the change in temperature if this q this heat flow into the body occurs over a time delta t then the rate of change of temperature then the rate of change of temperature will be 1 by ms times q by delta t so keeping the agents on the left side and the cause on oh, sorry keeping the cause on the left side and the result on the right side we can write this as uh so we will keep the result on the left because that is what you calculate and we will keep the cause on the right so the cause here is delta t by delta x and the resulting q by delta t is k times delta t by delta x here we will write that the cause is q by delta t a heat flow is the cause and 1 by ms times this cause results in a rate of change of temperature of this here we have that heat flow is again caused itself by a temperature gradient this is the pair of equations we are going to combine but we need to do so carefully first we will convert it into differential form so these deltas if you take the limit as delta x and delta t tends to zero we are basically looking at the heat flow in a small amount of time across a small space in the object then we get dq by dt equals k dt by dx and we get d temperature by dt equals 1 by ms dq by dt 
This is the heat flow equation, pair of heat flow equations through a body. Now to combine these equations, you have to notice one thing. If we have something like a rod, which is what we are going to consider right now. This equation says that there is a heat flow across the rod. If this is 1 and this is 2. Then equation 1 says there is a heat flow across the rod proportional to temperature gradient which itself implies that the temperature changes with position t is a function of x changes with position and then the second equation says that the temperature of a point depends on the heat inflow to a point to that point so that means temperature is changing with time temperature is also a function of time because the heats flowing in and flowing out of different parts of the body are not equal there may be an accumulation of heat at any point of the body and that will raise its temperature according to the second equation. So first equation says that temperature is a function of x. Second equation says that temperature is a function of time. So is it a function of x or time? The answer is that it's a function of both. Temperature is a function of position as well as time. The location on the body will tell you what temperature it is and that holds only for one particular time. You need to tell me both which location you are talking about and what time you are talking about for me to tell you the temperature at that point at that time. Now how the temperature or any function, how would it depend on two different coordinates? This is something we don't need right now but we are going to use at the end of the lecture. That we can say that temperature depends on position and time as a product of two functions. One function is a function of position multiplied by another function of time so this is a one kind of dependence of course i could have addition here i could have division here i could have power anything any arithmetic combination of x and t will give me a function that depends on uh, position as well as time for example i could say d of x comma t is equal to x square plus d square this is not of this form but this form is a simple kind of form which is something like x square into t square here xi of x is equal to x square and tau of t is equal to t square when the temperature function depends on position and time as a product of one position function and one time function then we call it a separable function right so we'll come back to this at the end here I have just introduced that temperature can depend on position as well as time and if it depends as a separable function, our calculations at the end will get much easier. So we start with these two equations and see how to combine them in a system where there is heat flow across caused by temperature and there is a heat accumulation resulting from this heat flow causing a change in the temperature. Basically, we are going to eliminate Q from this equation and this equation to get how the temperature of the body changes with time. So, the left side equation is about heat flow across a body. dQ by dt equals K dQ by dt. Actually, there should be a minus here because if the temperature is increasing in one direction, heat flow is in the opposite direction. So now I want you to look at this. This is the heat flow across this point. This is the heat flow across this point. There, these are points along a rod. So this is a point with some particular position x. This is a point with another position x dash. So the difference between them, the distance between them is dx. Now dq by, there is a dq by dt here. There is a minus k dt by dx here this is the heat flow in this direction there is also a minus k dt by dx here this is the heat flow in this direction across this line there is a heat flow in this direction across this line what is the difference between these heat flows let's say use delta x what is the difference between these heat flows what is it what does it physically mean so this is minus k, I will take common. This is dt by dx 
how does this dt by dx change across this gap that will affect the heat flow right if i take delta of dt by dx the change in temperature gradient If I take the change in temperature gradient between these two points separated by delta x and I multiply that with minus k, what I am getting is the heat flow out of the system minus the heat flow into this system, the system being this small region of the rod. So when I consider this expression, I am subtracting the heat flow out of this region in the rod to the heat flow into this region in the rod which gives me heat flow outflow minus heat inflow, which is just the heat accumulation. This heat outflow minus heat inflow, which is just accumulation of heat. So minus K delta of dt by dx minus k delta of dt by dx is the accumulation of heat in time dt. In this dt time, in this dt time, we consider dq by dt here. In this dt time, the heat accumulated is such that dq accumulated by dt is equal to minus k delta dt by dx. This is part one. Now what is the effect of heat accumulating on a body? As we just discussed, heat accumulating within a body will cause its temperature to rise according to the equation dq by dt equal to ms dt by dt. Heat accumulating into a body causes its temperature to rise according to this equation. So then the temperature of this region, the temperature of this region is going to rise according to that equation I have just written, where the accumulated heat is this. So we will adopt that equation for this small region, dq accumulated by dt is just minus k delta of dt by dx. The change in the temperature gradient across the ends of the region when multiplied with the conductivity gives the accumulation of heat. Now the mass of that small part I can write as lambda times its length where lambda is the linear density. Then I will write the specific heat capacity of the material and I have how the temperature of the body changes with time. Now I just will take this delta x this side and I get the equation minus k delta of gradient by delta x is equal to lambda s into temperature rate. Now this is very important. This is how the gradient changes with position. Gradient itself is how the temperature changes with position. And now I'm talking about the how the gradient itself changes with position, basically the gradient of the gradient. If I take limit as delta x tends to zero, then this fraction will also become a differential. And you will recognize this as the double derivative of the temperature. That leaves me with the equation minus k d by dx of dt by dx. d by dx of dt by dx is equal to lambda s dt by dt and we usually have a notation for this we write it as the double derivative d square t by dx square is equal to lambda s dt by dt this is the basic heat flow equation this was studied by great scientists laplace boltzmann and others this was studied in one two and three dimensions but in one dimension, the equation is really simple, relatively simple, where the conductivity times the second derivative of the temperature gradient of the temperature with respect to position is equal to mass density times specific heat times the rate of change of temperature. I want you to remember that this equation is about temperature which changes with position as well as time. 
there are different temperatures at different positions and all these temperatures are different at different times and we want to now find how is it that this temperature changes with position and time this is where we use the fact that if the temperature is separable we can solve this equation simply so i'll rewrite that equation d square t by dx square is equal to i'll take k to that side i'll get lambda s by t times this t by this is the equation i had i just took k to that side i get lambda s by t so if t is of the form it is a function of position and time but it is a separable function which means i can write it as the product of a function of position with a function of time if i can write t like this then what will be the second derivative of t with respect to x no. now we are talking only of derivatives with respect to x which means time is not changing then in this case this becomes a constant which means i can take it out of the derivative and i simply have to differentiate this twice and i will get x double dash of this is d square t by dx square. same thing i will do with time now i need dt by dt and now this becomes a constant because it does not change with time and it is this thing which we have to differentiate but only once in this case and i get x of so z of x times tau dash of t what is the use of taking this separable differentiation the use is that when you substitute back into this equation basically we want to find the temperature function which satisfies this equation what we are going to do is assume that that function which satisfies this equation is separable and then we are going to find these components we are going to find these two components from this equation that will give us the temperature uh, by just by multiplying them we will get back how the temperature depends on position and time to find these two components of the temperature we will substitute back these equations into this to get now this derivative with position was r of t times pi double dash of x is equal to I have minus lambda s by k, and then I have uh, tau of x times tau dash of t. Now we make an important step here. We divide by tau times tau. Basically, take this to this side and take this to this side. That will give me tau double dash of x by tau of x. is equal to minus lambda s by k times tau dash of k by tau dash now comes the why they are called separable forms because if you look at the left side it depends only on x and if you look at the right side It depends only on t. So if I change t while keeping x constant, the left side is not going to change. That means the right side also should not change with time, because the left side will not change with time. That simply means that this function, where tau is differentiated and then divided by itself. that function must be a constant otherwise when we change the time the right side is going to change and the left side is not going to change but these two are equal so that means if the right side is not supposed to change with time then tau must be such a function that when we differentiate and divide by itself it gives us a constant that means the differentiation of tau with respect to time divided by tau itself is simply a constant i will call that constant w now this is actually a very easy equation to solve we'll get back to the tri part in a moment first let's take care of the tau part 
if I cross multiply that equation, I get tau dash of t is equal to w into tau of t. And what does this tell me? It simply tells me that tau is equal to, it is a function. When you differentiate, you get a constant times the function itself, which means it must be a into e power omega t. That is when, when you differentiate this, you will get that. You can sim you can find this by the standard method of solving differential equations. You can say one by tau times tau dash is equal to omega, which means uh, d by dt of log of tau is equal to omega. Now integrating both sides, I get log of tau is equal to omega t, which means tau is equal to e power omega t. You can solve the equation this way or you can just realize that tau is a function which when you differentiate gives you a constant times the same function back and the only function that satisfies it is the exponential function. Mm -hmm. So now we know the time dependence of temperature. If the temperature at any point is t, then the temperature will increase or decrease with time as omega times t. Now, we go back to the x part, chi of x. Now we decided that this part is a constant, which is equal to omega, which means chi double dash of x by chi of x. I'll just cross multiply. I'll get minus lambda s by a times that thing becomes omega. And then I had it divided by chi here, so it becomes chi b. This is minus omega lambda s by k times chi of x, chi double dash of x. You will recognize this equation from simple harmonic motion. x double dash of t is equal to minus omega square x of t. So this means this equation is solved by the simple harmonic solutions which are sine and cosine function which means the chi of x must be equal to some amplitude times cos of the square root of this right cos of square root of omega lambda s by k times x because this is a function of x so now we have solved the two parts of the equation and we assume that temperature is a product of these two parts. That means the temperature depends on position and time as uh, we will ignore this constant amplitude. The position time dependence is cos of root omega lambda s by k times x into e power t. This is the temperature time dependence. So, when you have, hello sir, when you have an equation where uh, temperature depends on position and time and it must depend in such a way that both the heat flow equation and the specific heat equation are satisfied, then the temperature must be a function of position and time such that its position dependence is a cosine function and the time dependence is an exponential function. If we graph these functions, what we will get is that the rod is like this and the temperature starts off as a cosine function. This is the temperature dependence on position. And with time what happens is you have an e power omega t term which means this temperature gradient exponentially decreases by time so this just becomes something like this, which again becomes something like this, and it flattens out. So the heat flow equation predicts a flattening out of the temperature. Flattening out of the temperature. You can see that the term inside the cosine, cos of root, omega lambda s by k into x. This term increases with omega. This means that if omega is higher, 
then this term will be higher, which means the cost is going to be more curved. If omega is lesser, then the cost is going to be less curved. And this has to be multiplied by e power omega t. There will be a minus there. This has to be multiplied by this. Which means more curved temperature, more curved temperature falls off quicker, falls off quicker. This is the important prediction of the heat equation, that it is not a temperature gradient which matters, it is a second gradient of temperature, the curvature of temperature. If temperature curves more, then it falls off quickly. Uh, which is very much understandable from a physical standpoint because you want the temperature graph, the body wants the temperature graph to flatten out. If the temperature has a lot of curvature in it, the position dependence of temperature has a lot of curvature in it, then those parts which are curved will quickly flatten out with time and those parts which are less curved will flatten out more slowly. The conclusion of this is that the heat flow equation predicts that bodies hate temperature curvature and more curved parts of temperature fall off quickly and less curved parts of temperature flatten more slowly. Overall, the temperature goes from a curved shape to a flatter shape with time.